Hey, y'all, Mike here, and I am speaking with Tom Siga today, the president and CEO of Duluth Pack, an awesome American manufacturer that's been around since 1882. They make leather and canvas bags and other gear. Tom, super glad to be speaking with you today. So thanks for the time. Mike, it's really great to be here and be able to talk about a great American company. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Why don't you give our viewers a little bit of background on yourself, as well as the history of Duluth Pack and who y'all are? So my history is uh, I'm from this area, uh, an old man now, but I uh, grew up here, uh, went to high school, college here, moved away for a while, got transferred back to Duluth, Minnesota. I mean, who on God's green earth gets transferred to Duluth, Minnesota, right? <laughs> but I had a career where I traveled extensively and ran into a lot of problems with bags and overnight bags and shaving kits and different gear that you carry when you're a road warrior and I started buying Duluth pack bags. First one is a briefcase 30 years ago. And I fell in love with this brand. I kept buying more and more. And uh, at that point, made a decision, Mike, that I've got to be part of this company. And it's this historic company. We'll talk a little bit about that coming up on, on the age and history and yeah. the heritage of this company. But I just felt I had to be part of this thing. And on uh, April Fool's Day of 07, I became the operating partner of the company. And uh, 17 years later, uh, 17 years of bliss. Haven't looked back. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. When you love what you do, truly, it's not like going to work. It's like going to have a whole bunch of fun every day. Yeah, we have a lot of tough days and things like that. But you, when you love what you do, it's a whole different mindset and perspective uh, on your daily to-do list. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I ha actually have a Duluth pack bag myself. I gifted one to my little brother for Christmas last year. Absolutely love y'all's products. And, you know, we're big fans of it over here, obviously, at, at allamerican.org. Uh, well, but... We appreciate your business. Thank you. It's you, the <laughs> customer that makes us be here. Absolutely. Um, well, tell us uh, maybe a little bit about the history of Duluth Pack since 1882, the evolution of the company, and where y'all are at today. Mike, isn't that crazy when you have to think and go, wait, wait, 1882, <laughs> not 1982. And if, if you thought 1982, you're still going, man, that's an old company. So we are the oldest canvas and leather pack and bag maker in the United States of America. And I, I got to tell you, I'm so proud of that. Nobody else can say that. We're it. We win. You know, that kind of thing. But it dates back really to Camille Poyer. The founder of this company was a French Canadian. He was up from the Montreal area. And he did some research. He obviously didn't Google, but he did some research and found that Duluth, Minnesota, back in the 1870s, per capita, was the wealthiest city in the United States of America. The reason being, we had the iron mines that were all cranking away. We had the timber industry up here. We had the rail industry to get all of that down to the Duluth area where we're on the end of Lake Superior, the largest freshwater lake in the world. And then the shipping industry getting it out of here. And because of all those massive growing industries, Duluth had a lot of wealth here, a lot of jobs and a lot of wealth. And so Mr. Poyer literally said, you know what, I'm going to pick up stake here. He uh, was a young man, had young kids, was a widow at that time already, and said, I'm moving to Duluth. So he took a train to New York, a train from New York to Chicago, Chicago to Minneapolis, St. Paul area. And that's where he had got off with all of his tools. He was a bootmaker. He was a cobbler. And he actually took a stagecoach up about halfway from the Twin Cities to Duluth. So Duluth is 150 miles from the Twin Cities, so about 75 miles away from Duluth, the road ended and there was a path, a trail, and he mm -hmm. walked with all of his belongings to Duluth, wow. set up shop, started making boots, and in the, in the 1870s and, and into early 1880s, and continued on with that business, but in 1882 in specific, he was commissioned to make a pack for the timber cruisers who were trying to get the rail from the Iron Range in the northern Minnesota down to Duluth. And they had to be out for weeks and weeks out in the bush, shooting all these lines as civil engineers, the timber cruisers, getting all that going. 
And he was commissioned to make a pack for them, and it became the original Duluth pack, the number two pack. The Poirier Pack, it was named back then, and then since then has been the Duluth Pack. December 12th, 1882, his patent was approved and filed, and that is the starting day of our company. So our birthday, our 141st birthday will be on December 12th of 2023. Yeah, and we're uh, recording this on December 4th, uh, but for our viewers, you should be watching this on December 12th, uh, which is when we're we're scheduled to post the video. So happy birthday to well, you and everybody else at Duluth Pack. Thank you. And hey, listeners, guess what? Go on our website and follow us on social because on our birthday, we're having some smoking good deals. <laughs> yeah, a couple of good sales uh, on the site for sure to celebrate the birthday. But congratulations, guys. Um, why don't you, you tell Mike. us a little bit about the current state of Duluth Pack uh, today? Obviously, you're still based in Duluth, uh, but how many people do you have? What does your manufacturing uh, footprint kind of look like up there? So we're we're old school, and that's who we are. That's our DNA, and that's who we want to remain, Mike, is that we are heritage. We're true history. A lot of companies out there, you know, it's like heritage styles. No, Duluth Pack is heritage. So any listeners, you ever want a tour, you're coming to Duluth, Minnesota, you call us, we'll schedule a tour. You can actually, we'll get you on a sewing machine. You'll be sewing uh, <laughs> a logo on a bag and, and find out how difficult this really is to do. But, you know, we are true history and heritage. So we have a factory. We're not a big factory. We have about 75 total employees right now um, in all of our different departments. About half of that is in production. Uh, making our bags. We have a footprint of uh, about uh, 10,000 square feet in production, something on that range. And uh, we're in the same old building we've been in since 1911. Wow. So what we yeah, have well over 100 years old, and you walk in there and you do truly feel like you're walking back in time. Yes, we don't have treadle sewing machines anymore. We actually have electricity for our sewing machines. So, <laughs> uh, but they're big industrial machines that that make canvas and leather bags. And Mike, when I came here uh, 17 years ago, we had uh, about 50 different styles of bags that we make uh, at the time. And now we make about 350 styles of bags. So we've really expanded. We have uh, somewhere uh, around 8,000, maybe a little south of 8,000 SKUs that we actually build because we have wow. a lot of colors that we make. We have a lot of leather options and a lot of wool options out of that 350 styles of bags. So uh, pretty diverse, uh, pretty crazy. I mean, uh, we have people around here, Mike, that remember every product by SKU. And an old guy like me has a hard time just remembering by product name. What bag is that? Well, let me think for a minute here. We have people like, oh, that's a B702, you know? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> so just a blast. We do it the old school way. Um, we are the true heritage and, and you know, our, our core values of this company, you know, we have mission statements and vision statements and all those things. And to be honest, if you ask me, I don't even remember really what those are for our company. But the thing that everyone at our company must know, Mike, is our core values, because that's who we are right here, right in the heart is who your core of who you are. And it's ours are very simple. You know, we're a simple company. So let's keep our core values simple. Number one, quality. Everything yep. we do has to be the high of a quality. Number two, premium products. And we are in the premium markets and we love it. That's that's our lane. That's where we like to be mm -hmm. is in that premium product lane. Number three, made in America. Mike, right over your right shoulder is an American flag. Well, yep. you will also find that awesome flag in every one of our products. And to put that flag in our products, Mike, is not that easy. You, we have a lot of steps we have to go to to actually say made in America, not assembled in America, made yeah, in absolutely. America. And we could not be more proud of that. And, and I would ask your listeners to seek out whether it's us or other great made in America companies. They're out there. You may have to do a little whole homework, but when you're buying from those made in America companies, you are supporting your loved ones, your brothers and sisters and, and your family and, and others' families who have lives just like the rest of us to pay mortgages and car payments and everything yeah. else we all have. And then our fourth and last core value 
is a lifetime guarantee on all craftsmanship and hardware, which really seals up that, you know, if you make a high quality product, you have the luxury to put that lifetime guarantee on it. Mm -hmm. But boy, oh boy, if you put a lifetime guarantee on a product and quality is not your first core value, I have a feeling your business model is a little bit flawed. Right. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned all the research uh, that folks can do to support other made in the USA businesses. Obviously, we do a lot of that at allamerican.org. So for all of our viewers, head to our website. We feature Duluth Pack and many other great brands and definitely understand the intensity that it requires to say made in the USA and make sure that you are following those FTC guidelines and everything uh, that really make that stamp on your products matter, um, which obviously means a lot to y'all as being part of your core values of being made in the USA. So uh, maybe uh, talk a little bit more about um, what American made means to y'all. Why do you care about it? Obviously it's the quality of your products, um, but clearly you have a really emotional tie to the Duluth area, Minnesota, um, being very uh, domestically made. Can you talk about that for a little bit and kind of the maybe more human side of being made in the U.S.? You know, it's it's an interesting question because I you can see I throw a lot of passion into it because it's it's who we are. It's a DNA yeah. of who we are as a company. But beyond me, forget about old Tom, right? This company has some great, great people. We have 75 awesome people that rely on our customer base and and to do everything for us, right? When they buy from us, that supplies everything for our, our employees, their wages their benefits, everything else that goes into it. But the pride that goes into American Made, I venture to guess that you will not find that where products are made elsewhere. And I'll give you a key example of that. If you grab the bag that you have, Mike, and open it up, and underneath the Duluth Pack logo, uh, and, and then there's an American flag logo right next mm -hmm. to it, flip the American flag logo up and it says handcrafted by the person who made that bag, started that yeah. bag, finished that bag, and then had the pride to sign that bag. And that was our craftspeople coming to us saying, we're proud of what we do. Is there a way we can sign these bags? And that's what we came up with is a tag inside that they can sign and date. And you can see who made your bag. You're not going to see that from stuff that's imported. You're just not going to see it. And it goes back to that pride and that 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 we care. We care what we do. We care about the bag that you carry, the memories that you're going to make in your bag, Mike. Mm -hmm. And someday, if you ever, you know, have some scars on it that you bring it back to us and we're going to fix it, you are going to say, please fix my bag and get it back to me as soon as you can, because I love this bag and the memories that it invokes of my travels or my ventures or yeah. whatever is, is really what happens with our bags. And it's, it's a crazy deal. One of the biggest compliments I can get as a leader of a company is when somebody tells me I carry my grandpa's bag. I know. How right? cool is that? Yeah. I mean, it really speaks to just the quality of the product and how long it lasts and putting a ton of care into every single one uh, that y'all make. And it's really hard work making those bags, especially continuously since 1882. And I'm sure, you know, not only uh, is that just an incredible accomplishment in and of itself, but probably comes with a lot of challenges along the way as well. Hey, you know what? Since 1882, guess what? Duluth Pack has survived yellow fever. It survived two world <laughs> right? wars. It supplied the, uh, the Great Depression. It 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 uh, survived the Great Depression, the Great Recession, you know, the pandemic we just got through, and all kinds of other things in between that this company has survived and seen. Yeah. I mean, we're older than sliced bread, for goodness sakes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. We're older than the automobile. I think, uh, you know, American manufacturing obviously has gone through its fair share of challenges over the last 100 years, and especially over the last 50, as a lot of companies have chosen to take taking shortcuts and outsourcing a lot of manufacturing and development. Maybe talk a little bit about, um, obviously, that's put a lot of additional pressure on domestic manufacturers uh, from a cost perspective, from a labor perspective, and really just staying competitive. 
Talk a little bit about maybe some of the biggest challenges that you guys have faced at Duluth Pack. And, you know, obviously you guys have overcome a lot. Um, and uh, just to shine a light maybe for our viewers on um, some of uh, the challenges and kind of road ahead that a lot of uh, great American manufacturers like yourself face on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, one of the biggest things we face is, is you know, our, it, it, it is what it is. Our labor rates are, are are very expensive and we pay benefits. We pay health insurance and life insurance and 401k and disability insurance. And you don't see that from imports, right? The, yeah. you, you all, we all know what's happening there and that's all gonna go into the quality of the product. So we, when you're buying American made, we all lean back on the, that quality statement all of the time. So our challenge is how do you make it so that people can afford your bag and we don't apologize for the price points and, mm -hmm. and nor should we apologize any of us who makes things in this great country but we have a lot of hurdles and steps that we have to overcome every day that the imports don't and so when you're supporting them you're also supporting a lot of bad things out there right these throwaway things that you can do you can buy a backpack from me or you can buy one from that's been imported and what what goes into me having to do that in the sourcing and the the labor rates and the taxes and everything else that you have to do to run a business here it is what it is right but there are challenges and that all is the consumer is going to pay for all of those things at the end of the day good bad or indifferent that's the way that it works out there and as all of those challenges cost more money the price of products go up now I will challenge anyone to buy one of my backpacks or any other Made in America product and buy one that's imported and then look at your value statement 10 years yeah, from now on which product are you still using and which one have you thrown away four or five times and then purchased again. And at the end of the day, the value statement of what you purchased is you are supporting American jobs first and foremost. And, and I, boy, I wish more people would do that. But second of all, you're doing your own pocketbook. You're paying me now for the high quality, but you're going to carry it the rest of your life and then you're going to pass it down. Yeah, pass that, it down to your grandkids. That's just facts. And, you know, one of the funniest stories I ever had was I was, we own one brick and mortar flagship retail store and I had an older fella in there and I was trying to tell him about our lifetime guarantee. And he looks at me, he goes, sir, I don't have that much life left. And I go, well, you know? <laughs> and I said, well, fair enough. And, uh, but you can always pass it down to your heirs. And he said, I don't like them. And I said, sir, then our products are not for you. <laughs> I don't like that. That's great. Uh, what a story. <laughs> but, but that's true, whether it's ours and, and we would love people to, to, to go and shop our products and buy our products and support our employees, but it's any made in America. And I'm, I'm huge yeah. on that. And I can tell you myself, I will search high and low for an American made product versus an imported product whenever I possibly can. And I'm willing to pay more for it because I know what it does for our employees. And I wanna do that for yeah. other companies and support that. Plus I know I'm just getting something that's better. Yeah. Great testament to y'all to provide the benefits that you do for uh, all of the workers at Duluth Pack, you know, with disability insurance and 401k and everything, even with the additional cost, it's so important to be supporting your community and uh, the folks who are driving, are the real driving force behind your mission. So kudos, kudos to y'all on that for sure. And then you highlighted a couple of things that... Uh, we really try to do a lot of at allamerican.org in terms of highlighting a lot of the more macro trends in terms of U.S. legislation and where things are heading in terms of uh, domestic regulation that empowers American manufacturers versus incentivizes companies to potentially outsource a lot of their stuff overseas. And so I think the more that we can talk about these types of subjects, it really hopefully shines a uh, great light on some of the issues that American manufacturers are facing, some of the things that we're trying to tackle so that folks can be more informed. Uh, and hopefully we can really uh, empower and move forward positive US legislation, regulation, uh, more uh, entrance into great industries like yours and, and others in manufacturing uh, and um, really help build 
uh, our uh, our just domestic uh, manufacturing footprint uh, even more and really turn the tides, which it already seems to be turning somewhat in, in some industries, which is great. But but people like yourself, we appreciate you so much because we need people like you continually just pounding that story home. And that's why I get so adamant about it and passionate about it is it makes such a difference. I get to see the difference it makes in people's lives. Yeah. And, and, and by you making your first venture into saying, you know, for Christmas this year, I'm going to buy one gift for somebody that's made in America, whether it's ours or somebody else's, you've just made a difference in this awesome country of ours. And, you know, um, you talk about the legislation and, and, and all of that in, and I, I, I love that you are on the forefront of fighting that battle because it becomes very difficult in your own, in our own country to do business here and getting, yeah. You know, I'll just, you know, taxes is an easy one to, to, to chew on, but, you know, to get taxed more and more and more as an American made business, but yet imports almost get, it's almost like a, it's a simple slide into our country to bring in imports um, versus actually building it here. And it should be yeah. the inverse to that. There should be tariffs and different things to import products into this country and we're not talking and people who make make things here we're not sitting with our hands out asking for handouts yeah but just break down hurdles instead of right. making more hurdles in our legislation just break down hurdles we're not asking for handouts break hurdles down so it's easier for us to build here not more difficult and please don't make it more more easy to bring in imports. And sometimes it definitely seems the inverse of that. And uh, from from where I sit at my desk and, and some of my constituents out there that are small business leaders in American manufacturing, it, it's, it gets very frustrating for us to do it. And, you know, I have an example where I was in a, I was in a group uh, of Made in America. We met a couple times a year, just to what, what fights and what, are you up against and and how can we help each other and what have you learned and so we're not you know really reinventing the wheel we're all trying to do it ourselves mm -hmm. and we had a guest who came in from a very large company who chose to take their business overseas 20 years ago and wanted us all to back them to get them funding from our government to bring manufacturing back here we said wait 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 you're the ones who sold your soul to go over there 20 years ago <laughs> when we never did. Now you're asking for us to support you to get free money from our government, which we are American manufacturing is going to be part paying part of that bill to bring you back. When you made all of this profit by going overseas already, that would be a big N.O. We're yeah. not going to support you in that. If you want to truly do it and if you you know it's the right thing or you wouldn't be doing it. But if you truly want to do it, then do it. Yeah, I think, you know, reshore, you bring up a really uh, important point around reshoring and a lot of these large companies coming back to the U.S. And I think the incentives uh, that the U.S. can offer to support that is obviously very good uh, because we want to bring a lot of that business back. Uh, but certainly, you know, a, a great point there on making sure that, you know, they can uh, use hopefully their own power uh, to do that. But it seems like going kind of circling back a little bit to the everyday American consumer, it feels like there's a lot more momentum. And we're seeing that in the data that we collect on American consumers being more conscientious about buying American made and wanting to buy more stuff that is domestically manufactured. And so we recently surveyed a lot of everyday Americans on uh, how often they search for made in the USA goods and also how often they buy those, what's our, what are some of the difficulties uh, that they have in the search and buying process, especially when shopping online. And uh, we found that there is definitely a lot of uh, momentum. It's, you know, slow trend up, but definitely a lot of really good momentum in American consumer sentiment for buying USA made products. And I wanted to ask you, do you guys, have you guys been seeing the same thing over the last few years? You know, where we're, we're seeing it is, you know, COVID, you have to throw a couple of years out because it yeah, threw yeah. everything in a tailspin <laughs> for, sure. for 
for so many of us. And in the outdoor space itself, there's kind of a, a COVID hangover, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, no, all of us, you know, some of the outdoor space did really well during COVID and some of it just didn't. And yeah. we fall into the ones that, hey, we were, we did okay. You know, we survived. Yeah. Um, and it's what it is, is um, the hangover of a lot of people won't go out and brick and mortar shop anymore. So yeah. whether it's our own flagship store or our dealer network, we do see those things that are, are struggling some because people aren't going out. Where yeah. you see the lift is in web purchases, right? Yeah. People who are shopping online. And where we also see a lift is in, we do a lot of private labels. So uh, your company comes to me and says, mm -hmm. hey, Tom, I want to gift my employees or I want to sell them in my company store some of your products, but I want my company logo on them. So my my employees are are proud of our company and our our brand. Um, but I'd like your bag, you know, something they could carry a briefcase or a backpack or a duffel or whatever it might be. And we private label, put their logos on it. That part of it we're seeing where people used to years ago try to just shop the cheapest thing there was and a lot of imports mm -hmm. that now those companies are saying, I want a American made product with my logo on it to give to my employees, yeah. my customers or sell in my own company store. And we're doing that part of our business is doing very nice. That's great. I, I was actually just up in the Massachusetts area visiting a company called 1620 Workwear. They make super durable uh, like pants and jackets and things like that. And they were uh, saying the exact same thing on the private label stuff of it being just a really thoughtful gift for a lot of employees. So if you have a, for all the viewers out there, if you have a team that you want to gift a wonderful bag to, I think Duluth Pack is an awesome option. And one other thing that I want to highlight that you said of the in-store shopping versus online shopping. And that's one of the things that we highlight at allamerican.org, All American which is very notoriously difficult, is finding the country of origin for specific products and doing specific made in America shopping online versus in-store. Because in-store, we have US legislation that requires the country of origin to be stamped on the product or packaging. Um, that makes it easy to identify, at least on eyesight, uh, like, the where your stuff is coming from that's not required on marketing materials brand websites things like that and so there is so much ambiguity with going back to what you originally said on made in the usa versus assembled versus designed and engineered uh or for folks who just don't disclose at all uh which i think is part of the frustration uh that a lot of american consumers feel when shopping online that hopefully we try and alleviate as much as possible and campaign for uh to make sure that uh, we hopefully can one day get more strict guidelines for brands to follow to disclose that type of information um but how uh, i think um yeah hopefully um you guys continue to see, you know, a really nice uptick in web sales and, um, you know, we're hope, trying to support y'all as much as possible in, in that well, endeavor too. We, we cannot, we cannot say thank you enough, uh, for that, because that, that is something that, you know, it's, it's, you may think you're buying something made in America when you're web shopping, when you're online shopping. Mm -hmm. Um, what I can tell you that most of us, when it's a dealer of ours or even a corporate customer private label, they'll say, can we put that American flag right on that page, every single page that they're going to shop that has your product on it? And we are absolutely pleased to do so. Yeah. And we do it on our own website and, and we ask that people do it on theirs as well to make it as easy for that person who's saying, mm -hmm. I'm venturing into this, hey, looking for Made in America products, but I can't find anything. Yeah. Um, that flag sticks out and it's it's it uh, looks awesome. It does indeed. Um, well, I know we only have a few minutes left here, so I wanted to circle back to just Duluth Pack and y'all and uh, what you got going on. So I'm curious to hear from you. What are you excited about in terms of the future of Duluth Pack and you know what y'all have going on right now? What does the future hold uh, and what are you excited about? You know, I think we have a very bright future. We just came out of some times that were pretty quonky for everybody. And yeah. I think, you know, people had to retool. 
uh, on how we think and how we do business. And, and I mentioned it a little bit there that, you know, I think it'll be a slow grind back on brick and mortar. So our own flagship store, I think we'll grind it back to the traffic we once had as people feel more free to get out and, and do things uh, out in public. And I think we'll grind it back uh, slowly, um, although slowly. Uh, I think our dealer network will be the same out there, except for the stores that that really, really promote Made in America. And, and they're trying to, our dealers that have Made in America as a, as a highlight within their store, those stores will do well for us because people go there for that yeah. reason. Um, but our big growth in the future will be web. And we have an absolute awesome web team and web website where you can you can buy everything and and shop everything and ask questions and do all that and then our private label uh as i mentioned earlier where we put your logo on our bag you sell it you give it away you do whatever you want once you've once you've uh you've received it um that part for us we're just literally uh it's blowing up for us it's really really fun and there's so many corporations now that say, no, as a corporation, we want to support American made stuff. And we're just not going to give just another thing that people will bring home and probably never use because they know that when they get something that's premium, when they get something that's high quality, that the people will continue to use it. And like uh, there's a lot of sales conferences and, and conferences that go on in Q1 every year. And we really push hard on those where all everyone gets a, you know, you sign into your conference and you get a whole bunch of materials and they buy these little totes from us that all the materials will go in with the conference name on it. But it's a high quality tote that people then take home with them. They don't just throw it in the garbage in the hotel room. They take yeah, it absolutely. home and then use it for their lunch or bring in their, their stuff to work every day. And uh, that business has been, it's just fun. It's just a blast. Yeah, I love it. Um, well, congratulations on all the success for over 140 years uh, at Duluth Pack. Once again, 141st birthday celebration on December 12th. Uh, Y'all are having a big sale on the website, so definitely go check it out to all of our viewers. Tom, any other details that you'd like to share? You know, uh, once again, and I pontificate all the time, is please support American Made. Yeah. Because when you do that, you're supporting American families and living here, how you know, it, that has to be important to each and every one of us that we do that. And so let's all just do our do our little part. Yes, well said. Well, Tom, thank you so much for the time. Uh, and to all of our viewers, thanks for supporting your country and shopping American made. See you all next time. Thank you, Mike.